Hi, I'm Paul Lefevre, the Real Software Developer Evangelist. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use ODBC to connect to an access database, retrieve data from the database, and even add new rows to the database. So let's get started. ODBC is a great way to connect to a database that doesn't have a built-in driver for Real Studio. In this example, we'll take a look at an access database I created. So the first thing you need to do is go to the ODBC control panel. So I'm just going to search for it here and it came up and now I can click set up ODBC data sources. The add button allows you to select from ODBC drivers that are installed on your system. This will vary from system to system and operating system to operating system. Uh, these appear to be the default drivers that are available on a relatively clean installation of Windows 8. Um, depending on what software you have, you may have different uh, different drivers installed or you may find you need to go to a particular database vendor's website to download their uh, ODBC driver. In this case we're going to use uh, Microsoft Access. So I'm going to click the Microsoft Access driver and click Finish. This one is fairly easy to configure because you're just pointing it to a file. If you were pointing it to a database server, you would need to provide information about how to connect to the server and probably log in and whatnot. So we'll give this a name, team example, and select the database. And you'll see this puts up uh, a selector from what appears to be 1995, uh, but we can find what we're looking for here. and there's the team database that I created in Microsoft Access so I'll select that and then click OK so you can see this is uh, under the user DSN uh, category of the ODBC data source administrator the DSN stands for uh, data source name and uh, the user ones indicate that these will only be available to this user account the system ones would be available system-wide uh, the name is important because this is what uh, will be used in Real Studio Code um, to reference uh, this particular uh, driver that we just set up. Now let's jump into Real Studio. Now this application is going to be relatively simple. It's going to connect to the team database, which is a standard database I use for this sort of uh, database demonstrations. It's a, a single table with just four columns. Um, a primary key ID column, uh, the name of the uh, team, uh, the coach, and the city. And uh, this particular table just has three rows uh, pre-populated in it. So let's uh, set up our window, give it a title, and drag a few buttons over to what we want. So first I want a push button to connect to the database. So I'll put this over here. And it's always important to give your buttons and all controls in the Windows good names so you can easily find them in the code editor and uh, refer to them in code easily. We'll put a list box underneath. This will contain uh, the data in the team table. We'll use it to display the data in the team table. So it's going to have four columns with a heading. And we'll set the heading value here. And then I'm going to add some fields to the bottom uh, to add rows to the database. So we'll add a field for the three columns that can actually be added. The ID column is created automatically by the database, so we don't need to provide a field for that. So as I put these in here, this would be the coach label. and the city label and then I can add the text fields and then of course I'll need to go back and give the text fields nice names because these are going to be referred to in code so I'll just call that name field coach field and city field 
And lastly, a couple more buttons are needed. We'll have a new button that'll be used to just essentially clear out these fields so that you can type in some new information. And I have a save button. All right, so that is the layout of the user interface. So let's jump in and take a look at what code we want for the connect button. So I double click on that to get to the action event. And the first thing we want to do before we even write any code here is add a property to reference the ODBC database. I'll call it MDB. The M is a prefix indicating this is a private property on the window. And the type is ODBC database. All right. Now the first thing we want to do is create a new instance of the database. And then we can specify the data source. You'll recall that I said it was important to know the, the DSN name from the ODBC control panel. And in this case, it was team example. And this is what is referred to as the data source here. So here I can just type in team example. And that tells ODBC to use what we already pre-configured in the ODBC control panel. And then we can try to connect. And if the connection failed, will display the error. And then if everything went fine, let's just uh, load the teams up into the list box. So we'll call our load teams method that we'll create next. Now the load teams method is responsible for retrieving the rows in the team table that's in the database and then displaying them in the list box. So this is going to be called at the end of the connect button and uh, we'll probably also use it at the end of the save button uh, when new rows are added. So first, if for any reason the database is nil, we just want to exit immediately because we won't be able to do anything. And I want to make sure that I, we can check right here. Yeah, see, I forgot to rename the list box. I didn't follow my rule of giving all the controls nice clean names. So I'm going to rename that to be team list so that my code can refer to a nice clean name rather than just list box one. So first I'm just going to delete all the rows because we're going to be retrieving stuff from the database and we don't want duplicates. I'll create the SQL which is very simple. We're just going to select everything from the team table. A record set is used to get the data from the database and we call the SQL select method using the SQL. The record set returns data then we can process it. So this is a while loop that just loops through all the rows in the data, moving to the next one, one after another, until there are no more left. And what we're going to do in this while loop is add a row to the list box for each column that's in the database. So the first column is ID, second column is the name. Take this to another line. fourth column is coach and the last column is the city so I think I got that right and then one thing we want to do here is close the record set now that we're done with it so let's just jump back here and give our app a nice name and run it. 
So you can see our app has come up. The layout looks as we would expect. We'll click the connect button and we can see it connected and it was able to retrieve the three rows from the database and display all the data. So that's great. Uh, the part at the bottom we haven't done anything with so that won't do anything um, but we'll do that now. So we'll go back to the window and the first thing we'll want to look at is the new button. And this code is pretty simple. It's just going to clear out uh, the fields so that uh, a new uh, row can be entered. Now we'll look at the save button. And here is where we will take the data that was entered in those fields and add them to the database. So again, if there's nothing, if the if the database connection is nil for any reason, we immediately uh, get out because that's a bad situation. And I'm just going to punch in a bunch of code here because there's a little bit more to type. All right, so. First thing that this code does is it checks to make sure that an actual team name has been entered. If not, it puts up a message box saying please enter a team name and sets the focus on the name field and then returns from the method. And if we have a team name, we can go ahead and add the record to the database. So we create a new database record. Uh, we set the columns based on the field values that were entered in the window. We insert the record into the team table. And if there's an error, it's displayed. And if there's no error, we reload the teams in the list box. So pretty quick and easy. Let's uh, run this and connect. And we still see our uh, same three teams, but let's add a new one. And click Save. And you can see that it was added to the database, reloaded, and displayed at the end. Clicking the New button clears the field so that another one uh, can be entered. And so on. So that's it. As you can see, connecting to ODBC is not terribly different than connecting to any other database. Um, the extra step is making sure that you have the ODBC driver that you need installed on your operating system and it is configured to connect to the database you're going to be using. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.